Ja, guten Abend, herzlich willkommen zum 37. Internationalen Dokumentarfilmfestival hier in München. Mein Name ist Barbara Off, ich bin Kuratorin für das DocFest, vor allem für den äh, Wettbewerb Doc Horizonte und freue mich sehr, Ihnen heute ähm, den wundervollen Film Midwives vorzustellen, der auch in, diesem, in dieser Wettbewerbsreihe lief. I'm switching now to English because uh, we have um, two guests here. And that is, please welcome with me the director, Snow Hin Eng Liang, and her German producer from AMA Film in Berlin, Ulla Lehmann. Warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining our screening. Yes, maybe you want to say a few words in the beginning? Yeah. Yes, so sorry that I couldn't be able to join in person, but I'm really looking forward to talk with you for a Q&A session. Yeah, so happy to present my films at the uh, Unifilm Festival. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Snow is uh, joining us from New York at the moment. Uh, she stays there and uh, Ulla is based in Berlin. So um, welcome to Munich in Zoom. Thanks to COVID-19 and the new technologies, we can be here together tonight. Yeah, um, Snow, thank you for this wonderful film and uh, for all the work you put into it. Um, I read that it was a very long project. You put a lot of time into it. I think five years of filming, um, Going back to uh, the protagonists, maybe you can tell us a bit about the process and um, yeah, how it all yeah. went. Yes, I started since 2017 um, because uh, because of the Rohingya conflict happened in uh, in Myanmar, Rakhine State, in 2012. I was very much interested in uh, what's going on uh, in uh, in my state because I was born in Rakhine State. And because when I was little, two community, Buddhist and Rohingya Muslim, and they were friends, and then suddenly it all changed. They had to flee to Bangladesh and, and like uh, ethnic cleansing in the region. So for me, it's really hard to believe. Uh, so that's the reason I started following this two midwife story in 2017. Yes, then it took uh, five years. How did you find the midwives? I mean, these are two amazing protagonists and um, they're so clearly standing for, for these two um, ethnic groups, for the um, Myanmar, for the, the Buddhist and the Muslims. So um, it's, you, you could nev never um, written that better. <laughs> Yeah, so when I have the idea to uh, start this project, I, I have like, uh, you know, my dream character in my mind before I started to find my character. So I was thinking that, okay, it should be two midwives, one Buddhist and one Muslim working together in, this, uh, in a Rohingya, uh, Rohingya village. And they have to work together in the same same clinic that was my idea because the reason why i started this idea was because when people think about like a conflict region they start thinking about two men fighting and it's it's like a man story were appear suddenly in our imagination right so i wanted to know about what is like the role of women women in the region what mm -hmm. is the role of midwife in the region because um i hear from my related that uh, uh muslim community rohingya community they have so many babies and and like uh, babies come out all the time and the population is growing so when i hear that message that okay what are the roles of midwife so so that's that concept is coming to my mind and I kind of like, okay, I will start with two character. So I contact my auntie. I share about my dream character. I, I want to find two midwives. So she said, okay, come to Rakhine State and we go start for your dream character. So then we were uh, traveling in a different village. And then after three days, we found Pla and Nunu in the same village and they were walking in the, uh, at the same clinic. As soon as I saw them, I, I have a feeling that these are the characters mm. I've been searching for. I, I have been developing that uh, my manifesting character about six months before I talk to anyone, before I share with my aunt. So I, I, I have 
the feeling that I will go and find it and then I will find it for sure. That was kind of like my, my instant that when I see them, it was like, yeah, this two character like is the best. moment. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was much a moment to see them. And then from that point on, um, you, you, you stayed with them or you traveled back and forth or how was? Yes, yes, I stay, uh, I stay with them sometime, but I travel back and forth because I live in Yango. So coming to, to Rakhine State, it, it took like uh, one day. I have to take flight and then boat trip and then public dog driver. So, so it was like, uh, you know, uh, the transport, transportation time was like one day to get there. And then of course, when I started meeting uh, with uh, two of my character, I need to start trust building between me and two of my main character because I, I'm not, I don't live in Rakhine State. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, they thought I was a journalist just coming there, coming to the village for a very short time. But then I told them, no, I'm not journalist. I will come back and to study about your life. And because, because this is such an amazing that you are working together because at international people, they thought Rohingya, all the Rohingya flee to Bangladesh. And, but which is not true. There are like a, a state Rohingya community and, and Buddhist community, they still live together. They co there is coexistence. That's what I want to note about you know what i want to study from this two midwife then they become like we become very close and like like her sister and my second family mm. <laughs> very <laughs> nice so um when you have to travel you said and then you spend all that time doing the film this costs also a lot of money and yeah. um, now the production or the producer comes into the game um, i wanted to ask ulla um, from Ama Films. When did you, um, yeah, go into the project? When did you know about the project? And um, yeah, tell us a bit about the financing process behind, because that is your role. Yeah, this is a very long story. Um, I came into the project when Snow was in Europe in 2017. We knew each other before because we have been working on another film already. Then Snow came to Europe, we met and Snow had a little hard drive in her luggage and showed me some material. She just had filmed a couple of months before, I think if I remember it correctly. And she told me about this project and uh, I was immediately, uh, I f immediately fell in love with the project and the material. Because as you said before, it is like a, nearly like a fictional script or it is so unbelievable and the women characters are so strong um, that I felt I, I just have to help Snow and uh, search for financing. Also what was very important to me, what has already been mentioned that the world didn't know much about the so-called Rohingya crisis or what we knew were like news reports of uh, the refugee camps in Bangladesh. Maybe if some did some research, some videos in the internet about the, uh, yeah, about leaving Myanmar and uh, coming to Bangladesh, but mm. how would life go on in Rakhine state? How how could you just imagine it? And so, so Snow was just the only person to be able to, to talk about that to, because Rakhine State was a kind of a black box mm. nobody knew about. And uh, as Snow has family and background in Rakhine State and could move quite undercover, it was just meant to be to be made so regarding financing we started then approaching funds very soon very quick um, the project had to, to develop a little more then we um, at one moment we got also canadian co-producers and did some international pitchings and uh, yeah, bit by bit, we had like international fundings, Snow or the film team, but uh, 
mainly snow won pitch awards, mm -hmm. which were uh, where, where money was behind. And then we had uh, our German regional fund, MFG, who is uh, involved quite with a quite important amount. It was very tough to get broadcasters on board. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is in general for documentaries, but uh, this was uh, quite tough. Why do so, you think? Why, do, why was it uh, quite tough? Yeah, very good question. You, you would have to ask it to the broadcasters, but we had feedback uh, like, uh, this is very interesting, but it is very far away. Mm. Like if the German audience couldn't identify, or I think that's their mindset, mm. that is too far from us, then one feedback, what, I mean, I don't go into all details, <laughs> but the several commissioning editors loved it, but when it had to go through the program conference, it was kind of tough. Mm. Anyways, in the end, we got uh, the US broadcaster POV PBS on board, mm -hmm. also after the rough cut. This mm -hmm. seems to be a development uh, which is more and more frequent that <laughs> broadcasters follow a project and come in very late it, when there's no more risk, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. But we are happy to have them on board. And yeah. All the other, yeah, then Sundance funding from Sundance Institute, Tribeca Institute, wow. very yeah. great funders. So yes, many. Uh, yeah, just uh, just want to add uh, for another producer. Uh, he is Canadian Burmese. He came to Myanmar to teach at Yango Film School, where I was teaching there. There, how I met uh, my uh, another Canadian producer. So be because of. Um, he also know about my country situation because her his family, long long time ago they live in 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 Myanmar. Mm -hmm. So that's how I I started working together with Germany and and Can Canadian people. So yeah, so that's why like we got a funding from a uh, uh, different country. All over the world. Yeah. <laughs> Very well done. Yeah. So a few people were leaving already, but so I think it's, it's a bit late already. So I think we should um, see if there are any questions from the audience, maybe the few who are still here. Do you have any questions? Just post them in German or in English and I'll repeat them. No. One question. <laughs> okay, first I want to say this is really a great film, and uh, I was quite touched, deeply touched by it. And, and uh, I have one question uh, regarding the music, because first I thought all the music were uh, from this uh, site, all uh, the original folk music of mm -hmm. Myanmar, but uh, uh, in the end I, I saw there are composers' name, so I, I I want to know a little bit more about the uh, creation of the music. Mm -hmm. I like the music very much. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I think that's a very good question um, because I I work with composer from Germany and Myanmar, and also another composer from Canada uh, who live in Montreal. So um, I, I told them about like uh, uh, the things that I want to put like every detail that's where I want to add for the music part. So we collaborate together with a Myanmar musician and, and German musician. Because I actually, I live in Germany now. Now I just come to New York for a film promotion. So I was in, in Berlin the time that when I create the music part. So, so we, we were, Myanmar musician, he also, he has all these uh, equipment and German musician, uh, he recorded and that's how we collaborate together. Yeah, the music uh, also, I use it from Rohingya, uh, I use it Rohingya music <coughs> and another music is from, from Eastern uh, India uh, because because like uh, my story to uh, my character, they have such a, you know, they are inspire, inspire, inspiring women and they are so active and they have all the vision. So I wanted to put an energy of the women 
uh, women sounds from from Rohingya community. But sad, sadly, there is no women uh, sounds from Rohingya community. So I found that music is coming from the Eastern um, um, Indian part of the world. So it's a uh, uh, Titi Robin. Uh, um, Lyrics. Um, he he collaborate with Indian uh, singer. So so luckily I found that Bandela sound and I use it in the film. Uh, this uh, I'm curious. So have you ever seen this film to these two midwives? And uh, if yes, then what uh, was their reaction? Two of my, uh, yes, um, two of my midwife, they haven't seen me yet because I had to leave my country after finishing my final shoot because of the military coup in my country. Um, um, yeah, the day before I left Myanmar, like they were arresting so many journalists and filmmakers and artists. So I was very much worried that something might happen to my life. So or because, because of this project, I have so much responsibility to deliver to the world. So, so I had to leave my country. So I left my country in June in 2021. And then I started working in a, in a film editing with my Canadian producer. He is also editor in Thailand for four months before I got a German visa. Then, then I got a chance to um, enter Germany to finishing all these stuff like sound design and <laughs> yeah. So, so, so because of the security issue, I cannot send the film link to Myanmar yet. So they haven't. Uh, watch yet, but but sometime when we talk together on a um, Viber, I show something. They 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 like it because some mm -hmm. moment that uh, that I wanted to show them. So yeah, I haven't. They like it, but I haven't show yet uh, the whole film to uh, my character. Are there some more questions? Yeah, I see a hand over there. Can you hear me? Hi. Well, actually, not really much of a question, but just like compliments, I guess. Like, I'm fr I'm John from Malaysia, and I believe my country also has a significant community of uh, Rohingy Rohingyas, whether they were fleeing the the war, uh, or maybe they just preferred life over here. But uh, I just want to say that your your film was really really impactful. Like, I came here right after downing like one point five liters of beer at the nearby famous I think it's Hofbrau House, the famous brew house. I was like, this is gonna be fun. But this film just sobered me up instantly. That's just how powerful it was. And I think that not many people actually know the story of Rohingyas and the, the war outside of what uh, the politicians and the, the, the news uh, and uh, the media has uh, portrayed it to be. So just want to thank you for opening uh, my eyes up to their plight. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this film. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think you, you took up um, <clears throat> a very big task and um, you also when I was watching the film, um, like I came to my mind that it must have been very dangerous to do the filming. I mean, you now had to change your whole life um, after the film. You had to leave your country. I mean, a lot is at stake here, but, but you did it anyways. And uh, maybe you can tell us what what is your mission now i mean you can't go back you can't show it to your people but um and it was said that it's a very impactful film so do you want to use it and i mean you show it to the world you will it will travel the festivals but do you have any will you use it as a political medium to to change something Yes, at the moment, uh, maybe, maybe as you might know that in my country, Myanmar, it's really hard time, and uh, so many people has to leave country, and so many young people now are are joining in ethnic I'm I'm group um, to fight back to Myanmar military. So, so many young people, they are, they have to postpone their future. But for me, it's so lucky that I keep, 
I finished my film, so my future I can do it some some point like a next project. But for other people living in my country, they have no future. Until now, like people are still resisting and stay fighting um, back to military. So yeah, my yeah, of course, compared from other people, I'm so lucky to be I'm safe here. I I have stayed my future. But of course, when I started this project, like uh, since 2017, 19, there was several war in the region. Um, when I traveled to villager village, it was not easy, like because there were military checkpoint and I was so much fear. But of course I did it because I wanted to, to be a good filmmaker because this is my chance to, to start my career for a long, long term i want to be long term um, good documentary filmmaker so so that's why no matter what i i did it um yeah for my future even though i cannot go back to my country but there are so many organization and ngos and people now they are set up they set up uh, their office in Chiang Mai. Uh, very close to uh, Myanmar, the, near the border. So I'm planning to go there to screen my films. There's some point like they can do impact for my uh, for for the community in the region because even though they left Myanmar and some organization they are keep working in in Rakhine State and also midwives uh, supporting midwives uh, program and women program. So I'm gonna meet uh, some of the organization and maybe my my next project will be near the border because I cannot go back, enter to Myanmar. So mm. at least I can go back to the border. So next project will be around the border. Okay, good luck for that. Um, stay safe. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, all the best for, for your um, filmmaking career. And um, thank, thank you, you for, for doing this film. And also, Ulla, thank you so much for, for supporting the film and, and um, producing it and bringing it to the people, to the festival. I think we have to wrap up here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. You're most welcome. Yeah, the festival is not over yet. There's one day left tomorrow. So you can um, still catch some of the best films, the films who won the award. <coughs> the awards um, just in the ceremony um, an, an hour ago. So check out the program and join us for the last day of the festival in the cinemas. And also then there's still one week of online um, program. Thank you very much. And thank you and all the best to you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Ciao.